Okay, welcome back to Fast Shape Performance there. My name is Tim Davies, and as you can see, I'm back in the attack shack dropping truth bombs on your personal battlefields, helping you to win the wars you are fighting. And today I've got a question for you, and it's pretty black and white. So in the comments, just save yourself some time, think about it for like half a second, and then write yes or no. Save yourself even more time and just write Y or N. And then what I'll do is I'll go down and collate all those answers up. And then the next time we do a video, I'll just say X amount of people thought this and Y amount of people thought that. And then we'll just work it out. Also, if the question is a little bit nuanced for you, then literally guys, just put yes, but blah, or no, but whatever. And give me a little bit more in depth. I do read all the comments. I'm going to do that work for you right now. And we'll come up with an answer. Right. The question is, I'm just kidding, I'm not that guy that's gonna do that. I don't sensationalize stuff, but this is an important question for you, right? And it's because of what's happened on one of our main military bases in the UK by someone I know, actually, to tell you the truth, and I'm not blaming her at all. Um, she is the base commander. That might have something to do with it, and we're going for that a little bit in a minute. Right, here's the question for you then. Again, in the comments, yes or no, or why we're in, I don't mind, okay? The question I've got for you then, is the role of our military to promote gender ideology and the LGBTQ plus community to our children. In fact, let's keep that more simple. Is that a role that our military should have? You know I'm a biased and mother hubbard about this, right? So I've got my answers to it and we're gonna go through that in a minute because personally, I have an opinion. I'm sure you do as well. Whack it down below, you know what I mean? We're gonna talk about other aspects of it as well. So don't get a freak on with me, all right? I mean, it could be the school, could be parenting, could be anything else. We're gonna talk about that. Now, here's the thing. At one of our bases, RF Bryce Norton, that is run by group captain Claire O'Grady. And now I know Claire, all right, went skiing with Claire. She's a fantastic woman. Don't have it, go at Claire, all right? Uh, I flew with her husband, Pabs, for a long, long time. He's a solid dude, as ever there was a solid dude. These are, I left about five years ago. So these people migrate, and now they're all group captains running bases and shit, about to hop into the air ranks where there is enough pension coming at you, okay? So what they have to do when they get there, obviously, they need to embrace populist culture and do something a little bit kind of crazy. And this is the first base them that has actually got a rainbow crossing on it. It's the first base in the military actually has got a rainbow crossing. Now, when I talked to someone about this in the past, they said, well, Tim, it's a rainbow crossing, mate. Who cares? I'm like, yeah, fair one, mate. It's a rainbow crossing, isn't it? But on the RAF's webpage itself, it actually says uh, that it isn't a rainbow crossing. So there's Claire then. Uh, she's the one, obviously, with the scrambled egg on her cap. She's a group captain. She's also the chair of the Royal Air Force Gender Network, whatever that means. I actually reached out to her and asked her, what does that mean? Didn't get a reply. Obviously, a very busy woman. Next to her, I believe, is is uh, the person who is the estates facility manager called Sarah Hayes. Now, we're starting to unravel a few things here. What you're looking at here is a rainbow crossing with a very young person on it, all right? A very young person. And I don't have children myself, so I don't know how young this, this young person is. I'm assuming they're, what, four, five, maybe three, four, five, something like that. My thing is, I don't want them being involved in all this. Look, they're cutting that rainbow flag and everything. I think it's too young for them personally, but I'm not a parent, so I don't know. So parents here, please go, no, actually, I want my four-year-old kid to be involved in all of this, all right? And then I'll shut up, because I don't know whether it's right. I don't know what parents want, you know what I mean? I'm not a parent, okay? So you've got a little young young person there cutting a ribbon, and then they've got this rainbow crossing out there that people on the base, the young person's gonna see every day. Let's have a look at the text here. Rainbow Crossing unveiled at RAF Bryce Norton. It's probably our one of our biggest bases in the Royal Air Force. We don't have many bases anymore, but it's the biggest, one of our biggest bases. RAF Bryce Norton has unveiled a new pedestrian crossing system at a key intersection, intersectionality, get that word in, at the main entrance point to the station, including the first rainbow crossing present on a military establishment in the UK. I wouldn't be celebrating that. Members of the uh, DIA at Bryce Norton became aware of the need for an improved pedestrian crossing system near the very front of the main gate of RF Bryce Norton, linking walking routes and improving safety for all users at the busy entry point. Look, I'm not even sure this is legal, and I'm not going to get into that. But in the highway code, I don't know whether, I know police horses can't cross these things, and I think guide dogs get messed up with them as well. I don't think, I think if you run someone down on this, I don't think this is a legal walkway. So it's gonna link the um, the Royal Air Force Association Kid Nursery entrance to much of the delight of the children. Have they asked the children? <laughs> the children will be delighted. You will be delighted, kids. Uh, apparently rainbow crossings can be found across the UK, supporting the LGBTQ plus community and promoting diversity and inclusion, which is of course what a, what a squadron, what a, wrong, what a base commander has to get behind because that's the narrative, isn't it? Being pushed up from the top. We'll look a little bit about that in a minute because I'm not here 
here to hurt the Royal Air Force. I think the Royal Air Force is being hurt from within. What I'm here to do is to try and unravel this and to go, how uh, how is this happening within our service? And what can be done to make sure that it doesn't get itself in a position which is going to harm it, basically, and be detrimental for the health of the service itself? The idea for the project, of course it did, came from Sarah Hayes, who works as an estate facilities manager for the DIO at RF Bryce Norton. She said... And I don't want to read this. And I was just going to put it up and go, guys, let this enter your brain so it doesn't have to enter my brain because it's going to be bollocks. Let's pretend that Sarah has something valuable to say. As a member of the LGBTQ plus community, well, of course she fucking is. I'm very proud to see this project completed and unveiled on the 31st of March, which is Transgender Visibility Day. Yeah, because I must admit, I was really struggling to see transgender people. Where have they gone? Anyone seen any transgender people around? I'm literally looking everywhere. I can't see anything. It's important that they have a day. Crikey, 365 days, if you ask me. The rainbow crossing has strong ties with the LGBTQIA community. Let's not stop there. Shut up. You know it's not that. It's the LGBTQIA PPK2S community. And there's a plus on the end of that as well. And I can name them all because I've done the work on it. And she's just taken some out to give it more respectability. People call me transphobic. I don't think I'm transphobic. I haven't got an issue with trans people whatsoever. In fact, I was watching a woman, um, a Blair White, in fact, recently. Uh, fantastic, speaks sense, absolutely superb. Has strong ties with the LGBTQA community. Over the past three years, has also become a symbol of thanks to Munchy staff during COVID. I honestly don't know where this woman can be virtue signaling more. It serves as a reminder, because we've asked Sarah to remind us, by the way. That's what we obviously did. We said, Sarah, as a an estates facilities manager, please. Can you remind us of this? And luckily she's taken up that mantle and she's gone, yes, I can. I can remind you of this, Tim. It serves as a reminder of the progress within the MOD and its stance on making the armed forces a more inclusive and accepting environment. I'm exceptionally proud of all involved. Of course you are. Of course you are. Oh, clap, clap. Someone get her a medal. Someone get her a medal. Make sure it's got that rainbow shit all over it, please. Right, here's the other thing though. If we look at Claire, and the only reason I'm doing this, and not because I've got anything against Claire, really, I don't at all. I think I think when you get into that position as a group captain, you're running a station, it's a pretty complicated task. And I think what actually happens here is you sort of go along with themes, you're sat in these meetings, you're probably very tired as well. It's got to be a busy job. All the station commanders that I worked with before, it was a heavy job for them, all right? It was a heavy job. We know it's a heavy job, a lot of people to please. And I think what's happened here is Claire's just gone, sorry, what, Rainbow Crossing? Yeah, do it, whatever, do it. Next thing in the morning, she wakes up with a photographer at the door and they're like, Claire, can you come down and have a picture by the rainbow crossing with a small child please that we're going to indoctrinate into the lgbt community without you knowing she's going to go on oh, scratch your eyes what yeah oh, flash 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 can i go back to work now please and then there's a young kid on a crossing cutting a tape and i'm talking about it on youtube and i'm like why are you doing this to our children what, what are you doing to the kids these are kids i don't need to know this stuff when i was this kid's age here which i'm thinking it might be four or five i might be a little bit I might, might, she might be, I think it's a she, she might be younger, this, this young here. I'm not too sure. I'm not very good with how, I, I don't, well, I haven't really got many kids around. I don't know what ages they are, you know what I mean? Because I haven't got kids myself. But when I was that kid's age, I wanted to be a dog. I'm not even joking. It was an Alsatian. I wanted to be an Alsatian. My brother wanted to be a rocket or something, you know what I mean? That kid doesn't, doesn't know what it wants right now. I think the last thing it really wants is some adult telling it that it can be something else. Like a little kid, right? Do, adults do it to other adults, fair enough, but that's a young child here. We'll move on to Claire and Bryce Norton Market International Women's Day about a month ago, in fact, 10th of March. And the reason that we want to talk about this is because it's got this theme here, Embrace Equity, and it kind of flashed me up a little bit, like anyone knows what equity is actually supposed to be. I know what equity is supposed to be, and this is what upset me a bit. So what they're going to do here is they're going to get women to do everything on this one day, by the way, and uh, men are going to come and women are going to come. It's going to be all inclusive, apart from the fact that women are leading everything. The day comprised several events the personnel could dip in and out of, including forums, people to share ideas, guest speakers, chance to chat, local sports groups. The highlight of the day was the various fitness sessions in the station gym, open to the whole force to take part in at all levels, run by women and open to all. At the bottom here, this is the bit I'm interested in. Because I saw this before and I did ask Claire what this meant. I didn't get a response from it. But to me, International Women's Day is a time to celebrate the amazing achievements of women. As station commander and chair of the RF Gender Network, it also provides me an opportunity to raise awareness on the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. This shit must get fed down from the top. Oh, God, when does it end? Striving towards a world where gender is equal. Oh, I wish it was. 
I wish it would. Let me talk about that in a minute. This includes recognizing the male's allies around us. Never call men allies like that. We're not allies, all right? We're just doing hard jobs. We're building the world so that you don't have to, all right? Thanks, later, no worries. Uh, so we can all celebrate International Women's Day. Together we can embrace equity. Equity is the one thing that I hate more than anything else, okay? I'm all happy for quality of opportunity. You know me, 110%, right? I want everyone to have the opportunity to fly these big jets up here like I did. I want everyone. I didn't get, I got two E's at A-level, two E's and an N. Me, that's what I got. But I was still given the opportunity. Equity is different. That's a quality of outcome. That means everyone gets to fly them, which is absolutely patently ridiculous. But as I said, Claire's probably a little bit tired, didn't know what she's doing. I want everyone to have embrace equity. Let me talk about, let me talk about men and women's roles in the job market, shall we? No, don't do it, Tim. Don't do it, mate. I know what you're going to do. Don't do it. Right, so just Googled it, basically. Jobs, men and women, and thought, let's have a look. What can we do? Right, so jobs, primarily men then. Uh, let's have a look. So 99.2% of men are vehicle technicians, mechanics, and electricians. We're going to do this for a bit, and then we're going to flip it to flip you out, and we're going to have a look at the jobs that are primarily women doing them. Carpenters, electricians, these are all men. Metal working, maintenance fitters, plumbers, heating, ventilation, mobile machine drivers, operatives, forklift drivers. These are quite dangerous jobs. Large, good vehicle drivers, uh, glazes, windows, electricians. These are building building the world jobs, aren't they? Floors, wall tilers, electricians, construction. Not many women in that, to be fair. 4%, um, that could be anything, of course. Design, development, telecommunications, skilled, metal, taxi, cabs, chauffeurs, painters, train, tram drivers, men, men, men. Hospital porters, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, IT engineers, refuse, all that kind of stuff. Men, 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 men. Metal working, van drivers. You get the idea. I'll also put in that people that dive in the North Sea welding those cables, whatever, you know what I mean? People that go up and they fix power lines, people that are on top of those big buildings and they're, they're building stuff at altitude, all these really, really dangerous jobs building the world are done by men. So yeah, I do want, I do want that quality for all genders. I like some of those men to come down and do the women's jobs. What are the women's jobs you ask? Fair point, actually, I don't know, I haven't looked at it yet. Nursery nurses and assistants, legal secretaries, medical secretaries, child minors, personal assistants, teaching assistants, school secretaries, therapy professionals, housekeepers, related occupations, dancers, educational support assistants, pharmacy, receptionists, psychologists. That's the truth. Don't do couples counseling. It doesn't work. Pharmaceutical technicians, primary nursery educational, podiatrist school, whatever that is. Oh, and crossing patrol organizations. Hell to the yes with the rainbow crossings. Uh, beauticians, nurses, blah, 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 play workers, child vets, probation, welfare. Apparently, apparently the probation service in the UK is looking for more men because it's full of women trying to stop young men reoffending. Bit weird. So yes, we can see now, uh, going back now to what's that 80% women occupying these social workers, cleaners, domestic, special needs. So what we're seeing is men build the world and women kind of look after it. All right? So we don't want equality really, do we? Because when men well I doubt I want to be doing this kind of stuff but women most definitely don't want to be doing the dangerous jobs so I'm sure Claire didn't really know what was going on with the whole rainbow crossing thing and if she did she's probably doing it just to get that next rank fair enough what do you do she's got to be my age right probably late 40s there's not much else going on really is there if you step outside the service at that age you may as well press go for the top rank and everything else so as I said guys the question one more time is is the slash a role of our military to promote gender ideology and the LGBTQ plus community to our children? So is that a role that the military should have? Now, we haven't talked about schools. We haven't talked about the air cadets. We haven't talked about parents. And there is a difference between parents pushing this and or introducing this and of course schools introducing this. And I go backwards and forwards on that. So if you do have a, if you do have an opinion on that, like should kids be introduced to gender ideology in the classroom or is that a role of the parents and maybe put that down here as well because how do we do this with them okay how are we going to bring this to their attention guys i really appreciate it thanks so much till next time then tim davis flagship performance